Hello, everyone. We're a little bit early, but I was excited to come back. We're back. We have internet. For now. Ignore her. For now, yes. But, oh, my gosh. Surprisingly, after the first couple of days, I didn't really miss it that much. In fact, I don't think anyone really missed it that much after the initial shock wore off. But anyway, problem's not quite solved. Still got some issues. But we're back. I can do a show for you. I can sit here and talk to you and we can chat and gossip and do all that stuff about saving money and living the cheapskates way that we like to do without going zip, zip, zip and be all jerky and all over the place. So, and I've been reading the comments. It's nice to know we've been missed. That's oh, very heartwarming. Thank you so much. It was... Um, um, quiet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Who'd have thought that, you know, until the beginning of this year, Tuesdays and Thursday nights were quite full for me with other stuff. Then I started doing the live shows and they became full of live shows and YouTube and talking to you guys, which was is really nice. And then I wasn't and I had all this time and I'm like, oh, well, I'm just going to sit and twiddle my thumbs or what will I do for that couple of hours that I'm usually racing around trying to get ready for a show. It was quite bizarre. It's amazing how we adapt and change, how quickly we can adapt and change if we really want to, as in not really missing the internet at all. It was surprising. I still had, um, I used all the data on my phone, on my mobile plan, then we recharge the mobile Wi-Fi that we use when we go bush. Um, we recharge that a couple of times, but it's painfully slow, painfully, painfully slow, and I couldn't upload big files or anything, so that was a bit of a hard thing to do. It took me a while to get the newsletters uploaded each week, but anyway, we survived 20 days without internet. In 2020, uh, 2019. It's a hard knock life. It is a hard knock life. <laughs> We're really spoiled because I know a couple of times I will go, oh, I'll just, no, I can't just look that up because you all know I'm technologically incompetent. So even with my whiz bang fantastic new phone that I can actually use, doing some stuff online was a bit beyond me. So I had to wait. I was actually using pen and paper making notes of things I had to catch up on when we finally got internet back. So it's back. How long for? We don't know, but it's back. It's working and we're not going to complain and, and say anything else about it until the job is fixed and everything's completely back to normal, hopefully. So how have you all been? Because I've missed you too. Hannah's missed you too. So we'll catch up with you. We've got Priya, we've got Lynette, Emma Jane, Glennis, Julie, Julian Rod, Lorraine, Annette. Hi, Annette. Your cards are lovely. Um, Michelle, Diana, Maureen. I can't see. Julian Rod. Bob. Oh. Hi, Bob. Hope you're well. Hope everybody's well. Hello, Karen, Kath. Nola, lovely, Rebecca, oh, my gosh, all the old faithfuls back. Well, it's like having, having an afternoon tea party, no, it's not because it's not afternoon, but it's like having a party with our a old friends. Party. A supper party, exactly. So my only word of advice is if you ever have an issue with a telecommunications company, take notes, copious notes. Go to Dodo. Dates, times, who you spoke to. Always ask for a name. Ask for um, a transcript if they record the call. If they say they're recording the call, ask for a transcript. They have to legally give it to you, um, whether it's in an MP4 or a transcribed version. They still have to give it to you. Take copious notes of every conversation. Keep all the emails they send you because, honestly, when there's an issue, you ring back, you never talk to the same person. You can never, ever get back to the same person and you have to start from scratch and it is so frustrating. So take notes, lots and lots of notes. 
I'm a good note taker anyway, so it's a habit for me. My voice is still a bit scratchy. It comes and goes depending on what's going on. So, all right, we're all fit and happy and healthy here. The weather this week has been back to winter. Last week it was just glorious and I was puttering around outside in the garden and digging and weeding and planting and fertilising and pruning and transplanting and trimming edges and doing all sorts of stuff. So the backyard's actually looking quite spiffy at the moment because it didn't have much happening to it over winter. I didn't get out there very often, but the nice weather last week, we had warm days. We actually turned the heater off, let the fire go out for the first time since May. So it was really warm. Now we're back to cold again. Melbourne in spring. So this week or tonight, I thought I'd talk to you about how much you're really saving per hour because while I haven't had internet, I've been able to go back through some of the emails and things that I've downloaded and kept from people. And one of the things I hear all the time is I don't have time to do X because of whatever. And I have to work because of whatever. And you're so, this one really, this one blows my mind. You're so lucky you don't work, hmm, don't I? So I do work, quite long hours really, and just because you don't see it happening doesn't mean it doesn't happen. But I still manage to do a lot of things to save us money and little things like making washing powder. Now, it takes under five minutes to make a three-month supply of washing powder. Costs around 4 to $5. That will depend very much on the soap you use, where you buy your ingredients, but it shouldn't cost you more than $5 for the three-month supply. And at the very least, will save you um, probably $15 a month, so $45 over that three months. Now, it takes costs $5 and five minutes. It takes five minutes to make it. So I'm saving $40 in five minutes. And there's 12 lots of five minutes in an hour. So 12 fives are 60. Well done. Save $60 by making my own washing powder just in time. If I had to pay someone to do it, that's, I will be saving that. Put a dollar value on your time. Your time is worth something. So put that dollar value on it as you do with everything that you do if you're working you would expect to be paid an hourly rate so think about how much you're actually earning when you do things for yourself whether it's making miracle spray or baking a loaf of bread hanging the washing out to dry rather than putting it through the dryer little things like that because those savings actually mean something and what they mean is the more you can do for yourself and save the less time you actually have to work at a paid job to, to earn money. You don't need to be working as long. If you can save $100 a week, that's $400 over a month. So, you know, that's probably, you know, a month at the end of the year that technically you shouldn't have to work because you've already made that money. The trick is, and I keep saying it, Money's not saved until it's put in the bank. So to say, oh, I saved X amount of dollars is really good, but you haven't saved it until you've put it into your savings account. Until you've done that, you just haven't spent it. It's still there. So it actually needs to physically be saved for you to have a saving. What you're saying is, I didn't spend $15 on washing powder because I made my own. I didn't save $15. I didn't spend $15. So if I want to save it, I've got to put it in the bank. Simple as that. And I know that lots of people disagree with that, but that's the truth. It's not saved. If you haven't put it into a savings account or you haven't put it into your emergency fund, it's not saved. It's just not spent. I'll get off my high horse now. One of the things that... Um, 
um, is probably difficult when you think you're pressed for time is the concept of actually, <clears throat> excuse me, making something for yourself. So classic example is our pizzas on Thursday night. Now, they only take a few minutes to throw together. They don't take long at all, probably five minutes at the most to put three pizzas together and 20, 25 minutes in the oven. They cost about 6 to $7 to make the three of them. They're not expensive. They're really tasty, but they're not expensive. To get those three pizzas delivered would be around, even at $5 each, that's $15. So there's, say, this costs $6, so there's $9 that we aren't spending on pizza. And that's $9 for half an hour, that's $18 an hour in earnings. So think of it that way. Put a value on your time, put a value on your efforts and don't ignore the little savings. Because even if it is just $5 here or $2 there or 33 cents or whatever it is, every little bit that you don't spend is money that you still have to spend on something that you want or you need. So don't ignore them. And those little savings add up and they add up really, really quickly. People really like to say, oh, I saved um, $732 on my car insurance to quote an ad off the TV. And that's wonderful. And that's a huge amount of money that you're not spending on car insurance. But that's a one-off. You can do that once for the year. Whereas you can constantly look at ways to trim your grocery budget. You can constantly take your lunch to work. You can constantly make your own pizzas. You can constantly make your own washing powder. They are things that you do. They repeat savings that you potential savings that you have because remember until you put in the bank it's not saved but you're not spending that money over and over and it frees up the cash that you do have to use for other things i'm getting very jumbled here because i'm echoing a bit sorry i've still got a bit of a head cold okay Oh, we've got a birthday. Margarita. Oh, Margarita, happy birthday. I hope you've had a lovely day. I hope you're spoilt, spoilt, spoilt and loved, and I hope it's been a really nice day for you. That's really nice. Thank you for spending your time with us on your birthday. That's lovely. Okay. Priya, she's um, mood yoga. Her husband's cut her hair. She bakes at home. Cottage That's cheese. Pardon? How's the baking going? Hannah would like to know, Priya, Hannah would like to know how your baking is going. I don't know how you're going with the cottage cheese. Yeah. It is so simple, isn't it? Really, really simple. If you're interested in cottage cheese, go to our Cheese Gets Gov website, type in cottage cheese in the search at the top right. I was going to say left, but it's top right. And it'll bring up the page for you with the recipe on it. It's really easy to make cottage cheese. It's really easy to make ricotta. They are two things that we've got planned for future Thursday nights and mozzarella. Mm. Fresh mozzarella is really good and it's really easy to do. I just need Thomas because he can take the heat in his hands better than I can, although rubber gloves do help. So there are three things that we have coming up for Thursday nights. Um, uh, okay, sorry, my ears are echoey again. When you pack your lunch, whether it's to go to work, to go to school, supermarket, to go to shopping, yeah, or just to stay at home, if you're packing, if you're making lunches in the morning for the family, you might as well just make your own too and have it ready at lunch so that at lunchtime you can just sit down and relax, make a cup of tea and relax. Don't have to worry about it, it's done. But when you pack your lunch, um, I've lost my notes. Packing your lunch, the average lunch costs around $10 a day, $50 a week. It probably costs you $10 a week, about $10 a week maybe to make the sandwiches, try and some biscuits or a slice, a bit of fruit. And so that's $40 you're not spending. But it probably takes you half an hour to make them. 
for the week, if that, 15 minutes, doesn't take long to pack lunches and make lunches, but we'll be kind and say half an hour. So that's $40, that's $80 an hour in a wage. I'd like to earn $80 an hour. It would be, be nice to have $80 an hour. But think of your potential when you're packing your lunch. Think of the hourly rate. $80 an hour, is it worth it? I'd say it is. And straight away, you've got $40 left in your um, purse because you're not spending it on lunches. So it's there to pay a bill. It's there to for an emergency. It's there to add your savings. Okay. Priya says, the baking's going great. She baked a cake for hubby on Father's Day. Oh, really nice. Well done. Very proud of you. That's great. And it went to Spotlight and found some Christmas paper. Oh, a Christmas paper pad for $10 on clearance. And so that was a $15 discount bargain. Little hint. Um I never pay full price for my cardstock or the designer papers that I use in my scrapbooking and card making. I always look for them on special, on clearance. If you have a Kaiser Craft anywhere, I'm not sure the Kaiser Craft is in WA. If it is, they have great bargains often, regular sales where you'll get 50% off all your designer paper, all your um, cardstock, they're worth looking at. The other place that's really good for um, designer papers is your $2 shops. The little pads, little six by six pads are excellent value. They're at three to five dollars each. You can get 30 to 40 cards out of one of those pads if you Cut lay wisely. them out and cut wisely. So that's a huge um, benefit to you. And they're pretty papers. So think of things like that. Think a bit outside the square when it comes to looking for your papers and your cardstock for your craft, for your paper crafting, because there's bargains to be had everywhere. The other thing that you can do is shop at home first. So look at cereal boxes because often the fronts of cereal boxes or biscuit boxes have quite nice images on them that can be used as um, card card fronts or they can be cut up to become gift tags or flip them and you've got the brown on the inside, which is really nice for doing the rustic type cards. Using Instead of buying craft cards, which are the brown cards, use those. If you like the... Um, crimped paper look, you know, the corrugated paper. Look at the um, soft drink. Anyone that buys Pepsi or Coke cans in the big cartons, they have the cardboard layers between the cans. If you peel the paper off those, the inside makes great, is corrugated and is really good to cut up to use on your cards as a belly band, as a bit of an interest, add some depth to a card front. And that costs you nothing, especially if you know someone that already buys the cans and you don't have to, you know, just get them to save the um, inserts for you. Really easy to do. Um, so Barbara is getting back into making yogurt. She brought two brand new Easy Thermos containers for twelve dollars for both. Well done. Full cream milk powder and Woolworths. Oh, well done, Barb. With your yogurt, now someone posted or asked on Facebook just last week about the yogurt. If you like thick yogurt, if you're going to make yogurt and you like the nice thick yogurt, nice thick creamy yogurt, you have to use full cream milk. You just have to. You can use skim milk or light milk powder or skinny milk if you just use fresh milk, but it won't be as thick and creamy. Now, Commercial yogurts have thickness added to them. When you make your own yogurt at home, when you do a moo yogurt, you're not adding a thickener to it. It's just the pure natural culture and the fat in the milk. And we need the fat in the milk to make it thick and creamy. 
and it also needs to chill. So if you've left it on the bench and it's been overnight and you look at it and it's still a bit wobbly and you think it's a bit thin, pop it in the fridge and let it chill and that will help to thicken it because the fat will set. Now, you can leave it for longer if you want to. You can leave your yogurt on the bench in the thermos for up to 24 hours quite safely and let it ferment like that and it's fine. But the longer you leave it, the more tart it will be. So it will be a bit, and you'll sort of, and if you don't like a tart yogurt, you're best to leave it for no more than 12 hours and pop it in the fridge. Once you put it in the fridge and it starts to cool, it will stop fermenting and it won't become any more sour, but it won't thicken up. It won't naturally thicken up anymore either. So not much you can do about it when you moo yogurt. We don't add thickness to it, so we have to either use the full cream milk or put up with the slightly thinner um, yogurt. Now, sometimes if your starter is a bit stale, it won't thicken up as much. It will be quite thin. It'll probably be the consistency of a yogurt or something like that, a drinking yogurt. It is still fine to use, in which case you can either drink it, add it to smoothies and thick shakes, or you can use it in cakes and muffins, pancakes, that sort of thing, anything that needs milk in it, in your baking, um, use it for that. It will freeze. So if you're not going to be baking and you don't want to keep it in the fridge, you're worried about it, freeze it in half cup portions and use it up that way. Don't pour it down the sink. It's still good to use and you can use it for different things. Just, you know, it happens sometimes the start is not quite as fresh as we thought it was going to be and so the yogurt didn't set up as well as we'd hoped. It happens. I'm sure it happens in the factories too. Sometimes their thickener doesn't work. They probably pour these down the drain though. We're not going to do that because we don't like to waste our money. So think of other ways to use it and use it in baking and in smoothies is a really good way to do it. So now... Oh, Diana, I saw that you were going to make the Diana made um, three ingredient tea cake, which was the recipe I posted last week, and it's really easy. It's just flour, tea, and dried fruit. Soak the fruit in the tea, add the two cups of self raising flour, bake it in a loaf tin or little patty pans, whatever you like. And that's it. It's one of Wayne's favourite cakes. I was going to say, Dad mentioned that the other day. Yeah, Dad mentioned it the other day because he was dropping hints. Um, it's one of his favourite cakes. He really likes it. And it's also approved by his dietitian, So he can eat it, not the whole cake all at once, of course, but he can eat it. He can have a slice a day without having to worry about um, glucose levels, BGLs or anything. So something to think about. It can be made with fruit juice instead of tea or it can be made with milk instead of tea or it can be made with flavoured milk instead of tea. I made it with iced coffee instead of tea and if I don't have mixed fruit, it might just be sultanas or it could be apricots. I've done it with cherries. I didn't have mixed fruit but I had glacé cherries that were getting a bit candied and needed to be used up so I chopped those up and used those instead of the mixed fruit. It's a pretty versatile recipe. It's really easy, tasty, quick. It's one of those I don't do complicated and fussy because that's too time consuming. Can't be bothered. But if it's quick and easy and tasty, it'll usually be a winner in our house. So I'm glad it, I'm glad you liked it, Diana. Okay. And Meryl, yes, Arthur Daly in Ferntree Gully is excellent source of craft materials all sorts of craft materials. If you're into folk art, they have a beautiful range of paints, um, folk art paints and the different um, shapes and things for you to actually decorate, which is really good, plus a lot of card making supplies, scrapbooking supplies. Gems. Gems, perfect, you know, the little bit of bling that we like to add to our cards. Very inexpensive at Arthur Daly and Fern Tree Gully. Now, they're in Burwood High, on Burwood Highway. Um... After the dip, but before the hill. 
yeah, after the dip but before the hill when you actually go up to the Furniture Gully Shopping Centre. Yeah. So. Barb, when you buy your small tub of yoghurt, look for Greek yoghurt. Try and get plain Greek yoghurt and it should be about $2, $2.20 for the little tub. Depends on where you get it from. Use, use that and you can freeze the rest of it if you've got an empty ice cube tray spoon it into the ice cube tray, freeze it, then you can pop them out into a bag and then they're ready to go next time you want to make yoghurt. Freezing the starter is fine, just thaw it before you want to make your next batch. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, Priya, when I put my cake in the fridge, it dried up. Any tips on what sort of cake was it? And was it in an airtight container? Most cakes don't need to go into the fridge unless they have fruit or um, real cream or a cream cheese icing on them. Otherwise, they're quite um, safe to leave in a, a cake container on the bench or in the pantry. Um, Did you see more rains? Maureen went to Coles today for milk and they had heaps of marked down meat, got a few bargains, oh, meat bargains, hero, heroin, whatever, meat bargains. If you find meat bargains, jump on them. They are few and far between, although I did notice that I think it's Tasman Meats have T-bone steak on sale this week, which is... Uh, it's up there for my meat budget, but way lower than what it has been. And Australian butcher stores have Porterhouse, whole Porterhouse on sale this week. So I know if you buy the whole one, they will slice it for you. So I'm not a fan of T-bones. I don't like the, I just don't like them. But Porterhouse I can tolerate, I suppose. Oh, force myself. Okay, so Rebecca, I might have to give the yoga to go again. Had a bad experience. And, oh, no. Okay, don't give up, Rebecca. Just keep trying. Perhaps try a half batch. You can make a half batch. Just halve the ingredients. It'll still need to go in the thermos overnight, but you're not, you won't feel as if you're wasting so much if you don't like it. Now, remember, you're making plain yogurt to start with, so you'll need to add, if you like it sweet, you can add honey, you can add sugar, you can add um, stevia, agave, whatever to it if you want to, or you can use a few, a few puree, a fruit puree. <laughs> um, apple sauce is good for sweetening um, in your yogurt, or I actually don't mind it as it is, and I just add strawberries or blueberries or apricots or peaches or whatever, two fruits, whatever we've got. I add to it and pop it on my cereal and it's really yummy that way. Okay. Hi, Patricia. You're very welcome. I don't know. I'm just, we were talking about this last night. Hannah had a trivia um, thing after work tonight. And I said, well, I'm just full of trivia. You just never know what's going to come out of my mouth. Okay. What was six ninety nine dollars? Oh, rainbow! Oh, Rosalie! Wow! Rainbow meets Chenside Park Shopping Centre. Am I right? And I think there's one over Maureen's side of town. Correct me if I'm wrong. Over the western suburbs, I think there's a Rainbow Meats. Ah, uh, excellent. Rainbow Meats has some, it's a shame it's so far for me to go, but they have some really good, really, really good specials. And I know a lot of people swear by their meat and say it's just lovely all the time. So that's nice to know. Okie dokie. So there we go. Sorry, guys. All right. Yeah. Um, Yes, Bob, the yogurt recipe is on the website. If you just type in Cheapskates Yogurt, it'll pop up for you. And it's there step by step. There's only a couple of steps. It's really simple, really easy. Um, 
once once you've mastered making your own yogurt, you will you will just go, why have I ever why haven't I done this before? And why have I wasted so much money buying it? Because it's so much nicer. And when you make it and it's plain, you can use it as a substitute for sour cream. So you don't need to buy sour cream because you can just use yogurt, the plain yogurt. It works just as well. I use it on top of shh, don't tell the boys because they don't know. Sometimes on their um, tacos, they get plain yogurt instead of sour cream. Works really well. It's what I've got. I work with what I have. So, all right. All righty. Now, what else we got? Good grief. Okie dokie. Right. Yes, um, Patricia has a good point there to wrap the thermos in a towel if it's particularly cold. Uh, sometimes in winter, if I'm making it and I know we're going to have a frost overnight, even though our house stays reasonably warm, I will still wrap a towel around the um, thermos just to add a bit of extra heat and keep it in. The other thing I'll do is when I get up in the morning, I will um, empty out the water that's in it and top it up with fresh boiling water and put the lid on and leave it for another couple of hours. Um, I only do that in winter. I don't bother in summer, but in winter it just helps it to set a bit better. Little things that you learn, and I usually just tip the water that's been in it into the sink to wash up or into the washing machine or whatever. It doesn't get put down the drain. Have you all seen that ad with the little girl staring at the water running down the drain? I see dollar signs. <laughs> yeah, all that money going down the drain. So, yeah. All right. So, yogurt's not hard. It's really quite easy. It's trial and error as to how you like it. I like it really thick and I like it quite tart. The kids aren't so keen on the tart. So, sometimes I leave it a bit longer to suit me. Sometimes I don't. Fresh yogurt. Keep it in the container that you've made it in. Keep it in the fridge and it should keep for, it's good for at least seven to ten days. I've kept it for longer. Again, when you make it, you're not putting thickness in it, but you're not putting preservatives in it either. So just be aware of that. But it still keeps for a very long time. If, if it lasts that long, it doesn't usually last that long in our house. So I probably would make a tub of yogurt once a week. Um, when the children were small, I used to make it probably two or three times a week. I'd let them snack on yogurt. It would go on their breakfast. I'd add it to, to baking and things just for a little bit of extra goodness. And, and that's the other thing you can do with it. If you decide it's too tart and you don't like it, again, don't toss it or compost it. Use it in your baking. Add it to muffins. Add it to cakes. It goes really well. Lemon sour cream cake, make it a lemon yogurt cake. Orange yogurt cake um, apple add it to some apple and cinnamon muffins really nice lots of things you can do with it okay hello Evelyn uh, okay all righty I like the thick and tart too yeah I've never tried the cold squeak yogurt <laughs> Anyway, never mind. Okay, so does anyone have any questions? Anything you'd like to ask me before I show you something really exciting? It's just a glimpse and it's just a hint and it's just a slight teaser, but it's, it's exciting from our point of view anyway. So if you've got a question, ask away. And while you're asking, I'll show you something. I can't see. Can you see? There you go. Can't see me. You can see our planner. This oh, is okay. this is ignore the black coil, the black binding, because the binding is actually clear. This is our draft version of it. With, it's not in there. Ah, 
hardcover. We made it deliberately made it hardcover um, because we want it to last. So it's hardcover front and back. We have the month tabs on it, so it's easy to find. In the beginning, there's a really really nice little note from me and Hannah. And we've got all the usual stuff that goes in with planners. Uh, calendars and stuff like that but our plan is a little bit different because we made it to suit me pretty much and the things that I want in a planner so we've got goals we've got gift trackers we've got budgets we've got all sorts of things can't see you can't see it with the light oh that's a shame anyway the pictures are on the website but <laughs> I was having a nice time We've included a shopping list for each month with um, a pantry, fridge and freezer inventory for each month and we've included a weekly meal plan. So each week you can do your meal plan. You can copy mine if you like out of the newsletter. I don't mind. But there's space there for you to do your meal plan and your meal plan is brilliant because it's not just dinners. Some people like to just, you know, wing it but we've got, you've got space for breakfast, lunch, dinner and a snack each day. So really good if you're on a tight budget and a limited pantry, you can be quite detailed with your meal plan in this or you can be as, you know, light as you like and just scribble down sausages, mints, whatever. It's there for you. You can use it yourself. We've also included a weekly budget along with the yearly and monthly budget so that you can track how you're going with your spending and your saving all the time. So it's always up to date. You're not going to get lost with that. And the usual um, appointment places and the to-do lists. Yes. The to-do lists each day if you've got things to do like go to the dentist, hang up the washing, clean the light fittings whatever you can do your to-do lists as well and it's there for the whole year so that's it now pre-orders have closed of course but we're really excited about it and i picked this up from the printer today um when we were discussing the final putting it all together and it was all really exciting so i picked this up from the printer today we'll start sending them out next week so all pre-orders are going out next week everyone that's been pre-ordered will go out next week and we're sending that in the order they were ordered in. So first ordered will be the first one sent out. So that's how we're working it. Seems the fairest way to me. We have quite a few to get through. And I just wanted to show you, because I'm really excited about it, that it's sturdy. It's sturdy. It still fits in my handbag, so I'm sure it'll fit in yours if you like to cart your planner around with you. I like to cart mine around with me when I'm doing errands and things so I can cross stuff off. That's the way it goes for me. I was going to say something and it's gone. Can you still order or will they be able to order again? You can still order, um, but the pre-orders closed that but the next lot won't go out until closer to the end of october so we'll do all the pre-orders first and once they've all been done then we'll work on the next lot so yes you can still order we still have some left but once they are gone because it's a dated product because it's obviously 2020 planner um we won't be printing anymore so once they're gone they're gone but, yes, um, there's still some available. We're happy for you to have them. It's really nifty. I, Hannah put a lot of work into formatting for me and doing all that stuff. She put hours and hours and hours and hours of work into it and we went backwards and forwards with moving things around and making sure it had everything that we wanted in it so that it is actually a cheapskate lifestyle planner if you're living on a budget it'll work for you okay okay right in your planner you have um and these pages are all on the website you've got your goals for 2020 
Oh, you've got my work better. Can you see better? Right. You've got goals, monthly goals. We have a savings tracker. We've got a debt tracker, the bills log, a monthly overview where you can, which is your monthly calendar. Stop waving my hands around, she's saying. No. So that we can do these things. Um, you've got your annual budget, your weekly budget. There's an emergency fund challenge, people that are struggling to build their emergency fund. Um, we have a recipe tracker. We have a renewals tracker so that if you have subscriptions like your Cheapskates Club subscription and oh, you tend to, intend to forget when it's due, you can keep a track of it. Um, monthly and weekly shopping list because sometimes you need to do a little top-up shop. Pantry basics list, which is pretty much just what it says it is pantry basics so you can go through it and you can say yes 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 oh i need that pop it on and you can add your own into it too. and if you use um other things you might have different herbs and spices or special flowers or whatever that aren't on the list there's space for you to add them there too there's a birthday log there's a gift tracker so that you can um Keep, track of, Keep track of the who, the what, the where, the why, where it is, how much it costs, whatever, and a Christmas gift list. We added the Christmas gift list separately to the gift tracker because Christmas tends to be Busier. busier, but it's also a an, an event on its own, whereas oh, through the year you have family birthdays and things like that that you know are coming up. So they're slightly separate. Okay. Now, let me see if I can show you. There's also a place to write notes on each one. So we've got January here. See, so we'll start the year with January. Oh, it's not going to work. Wait. I can't see it. Oh, you can kind of see it. Kind of see it. No, it's not very good. We need better lights. Um, do your monthly goals. And within your monthly goals, there's your financial goals, family, professional, professional self-care. Um, so um, cheapskates goal. Yeah, your cheapskates goals. Um, all those sorts of things that you would like to accomplish. Self-care um, self is really important. And it's not something that we tend to think of necessarily as a goal that we should have as a written goal. So write it down and whether that's something, it could be something as simple as getting my nails done or read getting my hair cut or it could be read two books this month or spend an hour in the garden each week. Things that you enjoy that are important to you because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone else. You're not in a fit state to take care of anyone else. So you have to take care of yourself first to be able to take care of your family. And that's my thoughts anyway um, so that's yeah um the pages if you want to see um images of the pages they are on the cheapskates club website um and you'll be able to see them clearly and you click on them and they'll be bigger for you to see so yeah but it is still available but i had to show i had to show i had to show you how pretty it is um, now want to know, can you reprint Eat Well, Save More? I'd love to be able to, Meryl. Unfortunately, right at this very moment, I can't. That's because I wrote it, but it was published by Harper Collins. So, but give me a little while. I'm working on getting it back. And then I will be able to reprint Eat Well, Save More. And saving money is easy. I'll be able to reprint them all. Or I'll just rewrite them and we'll start from scratch. Just put two in one. So, yeah. All right. Now. Yeah. All right. Oh, Rebecca, don't worry. You're not an umpty. This is the first year we've done our planner. And it was a surprise. And it was a surprise. <laughs> So don't worry, you'll know for next year. And we've already started working on next year's and we've changed a few things. So it'll be even better next year. What about your new book? My new book, our year of meal plans. 
will be available um, from the end of October. Speaking, speaking, speaking to the printer about it today. So he's a bit excited. He had a few ideas, different ideas to what I had for binding and things. So um, that'll be available from the end of October. Julie, Julie thinks our plan is pretty weird. It's pretty plain because okay, we could have made it tizzy and colourful and arty, but that would have boosted the cost considerably. So it's still attractive, but it's practical too. And we chose a pretty picture because we had to have something pretty on it. Excuse me, I chose a pretty picture. But we also, or I was mindful of the fact that we're, we're frugal, so we can't be spending a lot of money on things if we don't have to. So even when we were speaking to our printer about this, and we had an issue and had to change printers. So we're speaking to the printer about it and he understood straight away. He knew straight away what I wanted and he was able to go, well, if we do this and this and this and try this, then it will be affordable. And so that's why it's um, not as colourful as some of them and it's not as arty and decorated as some of them and we haven't put in pretty little stickers and all that sort of stuff because it boosts the cost to you. And in all honesty, we want you to use it. We don't want you to be afraid to use it and we don't want it to be a burden to you. It's got to be a useful tool. And I know with my planners, I actually keep them. So I have a shelf on my bookcase in my office, top shelf, and I have planners going back 12 years. And I keep them so that I can refer back to them for different things, different ideas, because I use it for jotting down all sorts of things, which is where we came up with the recipe tracker and the renewal tracker and the gift list. All those things are things that I use all the time. Barb so. says it's dainty and elegant. Oh, thank you, Barb. <laughs> don't, know, <laughs> don't know about dainty. <laughs> it's a nice big 300 and... I think 66 pages. 366 pages. There you go. There's a lot. There's a lot in it. It's a big planner for the year. So there we go. Thank you, Glennis. Okay, so that's that. My book. I'm starting to get a bit hoarse. Have I bored everyone to tears? Are there any more questions? Um, we do a proper video on it next week. We will be doing a video on it, and we will, will be live. Or will it just be still recorded? We'll probably. Hmm, okay, I might be able to, if I can figure it out, because you know I'm technologically challenged. I might be able to do a YouTube premiere, which is, means that I've pre-recorded it. But then we do it live, so you'll still be here able to chat and ask questions, but I'll be able to answer the questions while it's playing through, if that makes sense. Anyway, I've not quite got my head around how to do the premieres yet, but I'm working on it because sometimes I think they would be really, really fun to do so that I could be in chat with you all the time, not just glancing away and having dead air so to speak so yeah but we do plan to do one and explain how everything works for you and how we would use it um, I've already started using the mock-up one mm -hmm. that we um, put together or one of the mock-up ones that we put together so that because it's it's really good it's got everything I need in it so I'm happy. As a working mum of four, I never get to join live, but okay, school holidays. So just want to say it was lovely to join you. Oh, thank you, Rebecca. Glad we're back in time. We are we're glad it's school holidays and we're glad we're glad we're back in time for you to be able to join us too. So folks. What are we cooking Thursday night? What are we cooking Thursday night? I'm not Thursday night. Oh. Okay. 
I don't know what I'm cooking Thursday night. Something simple. Oh, I'm not sure. I'll, work, I'll think of something for you. I'll see what I've got in the meal plan <laughs> coming up. Bake it for Friday. Well, what we've got for tea on Friday night. Yogurt. It might be that. Grocery yogurt? Mm, maybe. We'll see. I'll think of something. Haystacks, I'll let you all know sorry, anyway. I said. Haystacks. Is that what I've already got on tea? Because I can't. For tea, I can. But we could do haystacks. Haystacks. Thursday. But we can have haystacks on Friday night. Yeah, there's one on the menu today for Thursday. No. Yeah. No, but we'll ignore her. Haystacks. Haystacks sounds good. All right. And we have a long weekend coming up this weekend. Grand final weekend. Do we say go Tigers or go Giants? Back in the Giants. Hannah's back in the Giants. I think I might be too. I kind of like the idea of them winning. Grand Island. Victoria, so it's fine. Um, I think that would be, I think that would be nice to have a. Well, Richmond's had their turn. They won a couple of years ago. They can, you know, took them a while, but they finally got there. Anyway, grand final weekend. So maybe we'll do haystacks and some snacks to have for the um, grand final day. Oh yeah. All sorts of things we could have. Thank you, dokey folks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being loyal. And staying around and coming back. Now we've got internet again. Oh, everyone was so happy. They kept running around saying, guess what? We've got internet. Guess what? We've got internet. It was hilarious. I think Dad was the most excited. It was, it was just, yeah, we think, yeah, Wayne was pretty excited. Anyway, it's back. I'm back. It's really good. So thank you so much for joining us. I shall see you on Thursday night because we've got internet. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, folks, and bye. Toodles.